Carlos, thank you very much indeed for coming in today to talk to our Masters in Finance students. You've been working for many years in the banking sector and you're now working for the regulator in the UK. Uh, I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions, and I know this is your opinion, it's not the opinion of the, of the SS FSA necessarily, um, but what is your view on what are the developments within the European Union in terms of getting the regulators together to create a, a European PAN body? Well, first of all, Nigel, thank you very much for inviting me. It was a pleasure actually to talk to your MBA students uh, and to be in Barcelona, which is my hometown. Uh, so it is uh, regarding to your question on uh, how Europe is, is, is uh, actually uh, getting together to answer to problems. Actually, it's, uh, we have to go back to the 2008 crisis uh, in which we saw that the failure of uh, one bank can affect uh, not only his home country, but different countries. So uh, regulators all around the world believe and are convinced that the global problems need uh, global solutions. So in order to get a global solution, uh, we need to understand first of all what, what, what were the causes of this, of this uh, financial crisis, and uh, number two, how can we work together to give those uh, global solutions. Uh, this is uh, the work of the Financial Stability Board, uh, this is the work of the G20 and other multinational uh, uh, institutions actually to work uh, with, with that purpose. Uh, regarding to Europe, which is much more specific your question, uh, this is again uh, 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 is, is a, is a, is a big challenge for, for, the, for, the, for the European regulators and the European governments. So many institutions, as you say, the, the European Commission, uh, the uh, European Parliament, uh, they are um, legislating on a European pa pan-European basis mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in, in the terms that they are, they are getting out new legislation, not only for the financial services but for uh, other, uh, other sectors in the, in the, in the economy. Uh, and regarding on the financial services, uh, we will have uh, different institutions. Uh, we're having ins different institutions that they are regulated on a parent European basis, not only for one particular country, but for all the countries in Europe. Uh, this one of these is ESMA, uh, the European Securities Market uh, Association, which is uh, a European regulator. Uh, in which in, uh, they are going to not only to, to drive different policy, but to enforce this different policy and regulation uh, all around Europe. Okay. So one of the, one of the, one of the um, examples is credit rating agencies. So credit rating agencies, they are going to be regulated, they are regulated, and is the ESMA, this mm. uh, multinational, multi-European country, uh, sorry, multi-country on Europe uh, regulator that is going to take care of that. Understood. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you very much. And uh, you mentioned in your in the conference this morning that the the products, some of these OTC derivatives like swaps, mm. uh, the regulators, particularly in the UK, are trying to get those through a through some kind of exchange rather than OTC to to reduce the credit risk. Uh, can you just explain a little bit about the developments there? Yeah, it's again another uh, kind of lessons that. Uh, regulators all around the world uh, learn is that uh, these derivatives are uh, complex and there is a big network on this complexity. Uh, that banks, uh, they disclosed uh, the notional amounts, they disclosed uh, the tenors, the maturities, and uh, some risk parameters, uh, but uh, it was very difficult to understand the whole picture and especially the interconnectedness between mm. the different banks. So what would happen to the system if one particular bank defaulted? Mm. So it was very difficult to assess and uh, to do uh, stress test analysis on the one particular uh, bank, or one particular, um, uh, uh, I think we can cut here. Okay. Uh, So, we're, so, we're, so, so the stress tests that um, yeah. were involved? If one particular participant okay. uh, actually was, was going to default. So um, the idea it was to create central clearing counterparties, or CCPs, right. 
Uh, this in the United States has been uh, legislated by Dot Franks and uh, Dot Frank, and in the in Europe it's going to be EMIR, so the right. European Market uh, Infrastructure. Uh, so uh, this is quite uh, an interesting concept in terms that uh, uh, having a CCP and having a mandatory clearing for uh, standardized OTC contracts uh, would help the industry, not only the regulating, but the, the whole economy in general, in terms that actually it will reduce this interconnectivity between banks. Of course, we are not fooling ourselves, and uh, we see that there's going to be, in exchange for that, a big concentration of risk on the CCPs. Mm. So actually we must ensure that actually the, the CCP risk uh, is, is, is being managed on a sensible way. Okay, and when do you think this, you know, this uh, CCCP will be up and running? When will it be possible to trade these derivatives through this exchange? Uh, CCPs are already running, which is okay. uh, really good news. Uh, so in the United States you have DTCC, uh, and in Europe you have different, different CCPs in different countries that they are already running. So that is the good news that uh, more and more standardized products, mm -hmm. uh, standardized OTC derivatives are cleared through the CCPs. Uh, there is going to be a push on that uh, in terms of 2012 and 2013. So beginning in 2013, uh, um, clearing of standardized OTC products will be mandatory. Right. And this is the biggest step that we are working on right now. Understood. Carlos, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Nigel. Okay. Thank you. Pleasure.